Before we sit down, we just want to welcome one another. Uh, I know we are coming from different uh, houses. So when we are here, we are like everyone is new because we are not coming from one house. So we just want to welcome one another. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Once more, I want to welcome our leaders, elders and deacons of the church, wonderful leaders that God has given us. We just want to love you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Allow me to welcome our, our, our coordinators, uh, coordinators who work hand in hand with our overseers. We call them deputy parents. Because when the overseer is not there, they are there. Let's welcome our coordinators in Jesus' name. Together with me, let's welcome our provincial parents who are looking after us in the whole province. We want, just want to thank God to have them here, uh, seeing the great work that is happening here. I know that I was here one more time, but uh, yeah, I'm seeing the greatness of God. The place is becoming beautiful and beautiful by each day. And we know very well that there are strong leaders who are in front of us, administrating everything so that the church may run smoothly. Uh, we want to welcome our overseers in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! So I was thinking like, huh, there is going to be a dedication or an official opening. So now, what am I going to do because I'm staying far away? But I want to thank God so much because the overseer has given us that opportunity to come back and stay here. <laughs> Don't ask what are they doing here. I've been given the freedom of the city. Hallelujah! I love you good people. This church is Um I was saying, where did you get these crazy guys who were dancing in front of us here? Church here, Yakuna I love you all. In the name of Jesus, we may be seated in the presence of God. Um, we want to thank God so much mm, to be here this wonderful Sunday. Uh, it has been a long weekend to the ladies, starting from Thursday uh, and up to today, Sunday. We can say it has been a long weekend for us being in the presence of God, but we enjoyed being here at the mountain of God because we told ourselves that we are not in the church, but we are in the mountain. We told our church that we are not at the center, but we have climbed the mountain. We were here at the sanctuary. Um, we thank God so much this uh, Sunday. Um, as we we'll continue to be sharing uh, the word of God. So, I will quote. Someone said it's now called Zayoja chapter 4, verse number 9. If you stand before people and you don't quote Philippians, we will ask you, where are you coming from? So, Philippians now is called Zayoja chapter 4, verse number 9. That says the things that we had, those things that we saw, that we received, those things do, and the God of peace will be with you. As much as we want peace to prevail, starting from my life as an individual, and my family, the entire church, we, we, we also need to practice what we saw in our father, what we heard him speaking, what he taught us, you know, what we received. Uh, there, is, there is a thing like sometimes you hear, but you don't receive it will be meaning like, yes, you heard him. He was teaching, but you did not receive. It was like he was doing things, but you saw nothing. 
But combining everything, what we had, what we saw, what we received, you know, combining everything, it makes me to be a complete Christian, a complete child of God. So, the legacy that we sing, that the, the, the legacy still goes on. It's enveloped in the things that we saw our father doing. It's wrapped in those things that we had, that we saw. So for me to be a complete child of God or to be a complete true disciple of my father, I must continue to practice it. Amen. So one of the things that we saw, that we had, that we received, it is the covenant. Our father stayed in the covenant that God made with him. When this church was starting, God made a covenant with Ezekiel. The covenant, the agreement that made this church to be where it is even now. The, the, the agreement that made it to be where it is even when he is no longer there. When I was uh, talking uh, with the ladies last night and I was saying, you need just to thank God to be in such a beautiful church that when the founder is no longer there, the church remains stable. The founder is long gone, but the church is still moving intact without any fights, without battles, without pointing fingers to each other. You need to appreciate this God who brought you into such a beautiful ministry. It is because of the agreement, the covenant that God made with Ezekiel. A covenant or an agreement refers, a covenant refers to an agreement uh, made between two people or a formal commitment between two parties. I want to believe that we have heard a lot of definitions of this covenant. But to continue uh, walking in that way again and again, our Father says it makes us to understand deeper. A binding agreement or a promise between two parties whereby I can give a clear example of a, a woman and a, a wife and a husband. When they are getting married, they will give each other agreements, vows. That we call, to me, that's a wedding. A wedding, it's not celebrations, eating rice and what, what, and chicken. But the wedding is this time of vows. Because it's binding two parties. To say, I will be with you. In sickness and in health. In riches and poor. If you see now a wife running away from her husband saying, because now you are poor, I cannot stay with you. That means he, she did not make a proper vow. A proper agreement. A proper covenant. Because when we were making those agreements, we said, no matter you don't have a cobble in your pocket, I will continue to be with you. I'm going to be speaking about this covenant, but understanding the benefits of the covenant. I need to understand that in this covenant, there are benefits. It's not just a mere agreement or a mere words we are sharing, but there are benefits. I know through experience, when I get married I, um, to my husband, you know, he was poor. Do you know what a poor man is? My husband was very, very poor to an extent that sometimes we could not manage to get a, 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 
By that time, yes, we were still using dollars. It had value. A small coin of buying a bundle of vegetables we could not manage, but going to work each and every day. We were very poor. But because we made that covenant, that agreement, I would think every morning when I could not get bread on the table on my breakfast and whatever I want, I would think, huh, but where I am coming from? From my father's house. I want to believe, yes, she picked me when I was a village girl. Uh, then I just came to stay with my brother in town. But um, where I'm coming from, from that village, there is a big teapot with a strong tea. You know, you Zimbabwe, I don't know There is a tea hobu that is there, leftovers. There is bread with jam and mage on the other side. Eh, eh, that was good food by that time, right? Uh -huh. So I was thinking like, ah, why am I here? But bread and tea is there. This man is treating me bad. But because of the binding agreement, I did not go anywhere. I remained there cooking porridge without sugar to give my baby. My first child could not enjoy because of the poverty. But because of this binding agreement, binding promise, I did not run away. We continued to stay together. Uh, things going on and on and on until things started to get better. Bit by bit, bit by bit, uh, now we are getting things. We are enjoying life. God called us. We, go, we went to, to, to Bible school. Now we are pastors. He had that in mind. He still remembers that we were in poverty and this woman did not run away. She was supposed to run away from me to a point that one day she was told by he was told by his friend that mm, if God blesses you you must bless this woman. Shamari the life that you are living, this woman was supposed to run away. So he grabbed that message, that statement to a time when we were now overseers in the Johannesburg Central. He still remembers that message from his friend. He went to buy me a car. He, he brought a car and said, this is your car. This car is registered in your name. Here are the papers. I checked the papers. Truly speaking, that time, it was the time when uh, one of my children, yeah, my firstborn, um, was, was wedding. So, my number two sister was at our house. And he said, you can call your sister. Show your sister this car. Because it's not a private, private thing. Really, I bought you a car. From my heart. It, 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 maybe this time it's not that luxurious car. Ne? But at that time, I, love, I loved it. I liked it. It was a hande taxing. To make it to, 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 to sound nice, ne? it was a day taxing. I loved the car. He told me that I am appreciating your sex. You know very well I cannot explain anything to you, but you know how poor we were. Your parents were living a better life. My father had a shop, though living in a village, but he had a shop, he had a car. We were living a better life. You did not run away. You sticked to me. 
So here is a thank you for keeping our promise that we will be together in bad and good things. I'm giving this example so that we can understand what I'm going to be talking here. Understanding the benefit of the, of the covenant. Amen. This formal agreement, we see it again between David and Jonathan. From 1st Samuel chapter 20, verses 14 and 17, we see, we see Jonathan making an agreement with David. Treat me with faithful love of the Lord as long as I live. May you treat me with faithful love of the Lord as long as I live. Then he goes on to say, but if I die, the first statement is talking about himself. Treat me, David, with faithful love of the Lord as long as I live. It's a promise. But if I die, treat my family. He is now engaging his family in the promise. He is now engaging his family in this agreement. Treat my family with this faithful love, meaning this same love. Don't alter it. Treat my family with the same faithful love. Even when the Lord destroys all your enemies, don't forget my family. They made an agreement that day with David. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David saying, let the Lord require it at the hand of David's enemies. Jonathan again caused David to vow because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. A covenant is made between people who love one another. David and Jonathan loved each other. And they, it, it brought them to make this covenant. So God made a covenant with Ezekiel because Ezekiel loved God. And God loved Ezekiel. It made the two of them to, to have a covenant, an agreement. In the Bible, God made sacred uh, agreement with his people. We see him making agreement with Moses in the mountain through ten commandments where scholars call it Mosaic law. God made a covenant with his people, Israel. God made a covenant again with our forefather, the patriarch, Abraham. But to Abraham now, the agreement or the covenant had a condition. That's where we will come now uh, just to base what I'm going to be talking about. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, it says, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. Amen. Get out from your country. It was not easy. Get out from your family. It was not easy. Get out from your father's house. It was not an easy thing to do. And go to the land that I will show you. The land that God is not even telling you that you are uh, 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 getting out from South Africa, going to Botswana, or going to Namibia. God is just saying, to the land that I will show you. How can I agree to such a promise of going to a place that I am not told? That God is just saying, to a land that I will show you. This was not an easy thing to do. Then verse 2, God continues to say, 
I will make you a great nation. He is giving Abraham now a promise. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Verse number three. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And all families of the earth shall be blessed through you. The condition of this agreement was not easy. The condition of the covenant was not easy. Abraham did not just jump into the uh, second part. He would, I will bless you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless those who bless you. He was supposed to think about the first part. Get out of your country. Get out of your father's house. Get out from your family. He was supposed to first think deep about it. But yes, the second part has got blessing. The second part has got God will make great nation through me and all those things. But am I going to pass the first one? That's where most of us, we are failing to enjoy the benefit of the covenant. Yeah. Ah. Salvation comes in a different way. Some of us, we were saved. We received Jesus Christ just that we loved God. I wanted to be a a, a, a saved person. Some, I heard them saying, you, I heard the crusade, they were strong instruments as Baba Dza was encouraging us. We wanted to hear a good sound there. Someone said, he ah, this church is good though. And then she went, when people were called for Autago, she received Jesus Christ. Because of instruments. But thank God when you came, you did not remain on instruments. God saved your soul. Someone heard that ah, when you join forward in faith, ah, people are changed. In a month, you will be having money. In a month, you will change. It attracted someone to come. We were attracted by a lot of things, but not checking where we are coming from. Am I going to be able to leave everything that will make me to be a partaker of the covenant? Am I going to, am, am I going to be able to leave everything that was, my, that was part of me? Am I going to be able to live without them? so that I can be a partaker of the benefit of the kingdom. That's why now, sometimes we struggle with people. It's like the other leg is in the church, the other leg is outside. We did not live fully as Abraham did. Abraham understood what God was saying and the condition of the covenant, the condition of the promise, and he left. I always watch the movies of Abraham and his nephew, Lord, what, what, what. You know, the wife of Lord would say, ha, huh? we wanted to go to the city. Life is in the city. That's where they went to Sodom to enjoy life in the city. They left Abraham. Abraham knew the condition. He knew that God said, I will bless you if you go to the land that I will show you. Even if life is in the city. But God did not tell me to go in the city where life is. I must stay here even if it is a wilderness. I will remain in the wilderness because this is the place that God wants me to be. So right now, 
all the Jews, they are celebrating, they enjoy the benefits of this uh, agreement, of this promise, the agreement of this covenant through Abraham. It makes them now to continue in their law to teach their children about how God blessed them through this covenant. Amen. Of which I want to believe the same must happen in forward in faith. We are here. We are enjoying the benefits of the kingdom that God did with Ezekiel. It was not easy when God said to Ezekiel, now move away from high fields. Go to Bindura, to a remote place. I will take care of you there. How can you move away from people? where The people that you know, they can help you in time of trouble. Then you go to a remote place in Bindura. It was not easy. But he obeyed God. So in the covenant, there is obedience. In the covenant, there is the fear of God. In the covenant, there is also discipleship. In the covenant, there is also discipline that we get in the covenant that we saw in our father. We need to continue to remind our children who are coming up, the generation that is coming up, that there was a man who was raised by God. There was a man by the name Ezekiel Wandina Wanguguti who met God before he met a preacher. They must know that there was a man who was obedient enough to follow what God said to him though it was not easy. God said to Ezekiel, if we read in the history book, if you do my will and be faithful, I will be your money. If you do my will, so if you do my will, in a kanyaya, if you do my will, some of the wills of God, they are not easy to follow. But God was following each and everything that God was telling him. So, in Genesis 15 verses 1 to 7, I will just read a, a, a statement. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, <laughs> your very great reward. This time around, Abraham is no longer doubting God because there are some things that he saw. He followed and he saw it working. Here now he's saying, do not be afraid, Abraham, because I am your shield and I am your very great reward. Being a shield, God was saying, don't worry about anything. Don't be threatened by any situation. I am your shield. Do we know what is called a shield? A shield is like this when you are in the battlefield. When a spear or a bullet comes, if you put your shield on your breastplate, on your chest here, it's a breastplate that can protect you from harm. It protects you from death. It protects you from being injured. So God here is saying to Abraham, do not worry for I am your shield. I am going to protect you. Whatever comes, it must come to me first. Whatever comes, it must face me first. So don't worry about anything. I am here for you. That's why now in Isaiah 54 verse 17, God now says, no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. Because I am your shield. How can a weapon prosper when I am your shield? How can a man 
statement prosper when I am your shield because it goes on to say every tongue that rises against you in judgment ah he says you shall condemn you with your mouth you will condemn every negative word you shall condemn every word of curse you will condemn kunonzi kushurukidzirwa akushande condemn every negative word because in the agreement god said i will be your shield let a word of curse come god is my shield nothing will come to me whether physically or spiritually nothing will come to harm me because i have a strong shield we need to understand the benefits that are in the kingdom stay in the covenant stay in the covenant don't run away there is a, 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 a short video of baba that rotates each and every time usatize usatize maropa fadzari muno don't go, run away because your blessings are here there is a covenant carrying a lot of blessings for you and me Amen. i will not go away so i want to say to us as we are closing the year like this you need to know that god is your shield hallelujah you don't want to be like my husband right he doesn't want you to travel during your holidays is that ah, holiday in a way spirit spirit of holidays i don't want to move during holidays easter holidays i just go to church christmas mm -mm. if i wanted to travel somewhere i go when it is not a holiday let me say to triple c church no as we are ending the year that you have got a strong shield go wherever you want to go go to deben go to cape town fly to dubai go wherever you want to go you have a strong shield god is going to protect you no accident will come on your way no accident will come on your way no more misfortunes to your family because we have got a strong shield through the covenant god will protect you the blood of jesus christ is our strong shield just to speak the blood of jesus it will protect you from every harm no death no lack no accident no misfortune because you have the covenant of god Amen. there are benefits in this kingdom there are benefits in this covenant sometimes we we don't even know that the heavens they watch over us each and every day the eye of god it's upon each and every one of us do you know that there are meetings held in heaven meetings for good people meetings for bad people god holds meetings in heaven a meeting was held at one time god say who can go down and entice ahab it was a meeting held in heaven the, we heard the word of god say another spirit came and say i will go i will succeed i will go and do this and this and this uh -uh, you will not me i will go I will do this and this and this you will not succeed until another spirit came presented itself before God saying me I will go and I will succeed 
How? I will go in the mouth of his prophets. They will bring false prophecy to Ahab. Like, go, king, you are going to succeed. You are going to get victory where you are going. All his men came. The Bible tells us that others came holding horns, saying with these horns, King Ahab, you are going to get victory. A meeting was held up there. <laughs> there is danger. Some of the things that we do, we don't even know that there is a spirit that has been allowed to come and operate in you. Whether it destroy you, I don't know. So the eye of God looks upon each and every one of us. And God knows us very well. With our circumstances, our situations and everything, he knows us there is nothing that is hidden before God. And on one day, when it was the time of the Jews to be killed, Haman was running around with all his plans, running up and down, running up and down, putting everything in order to make sure that every Jew will receive a sword and killed. But there is God in heaven. Who can smile at someone at the last minute? I'm saying to us that we are wrapping up the year. We are, just, we are just now being on a countdown to wrap up the year. But the word of God says a day is like a thousand years before God. A thousand years like a day before him. It's us who are on countdown but with the plans of God. With the plans of God. Anything can happen any, any, at any time. Even these two months left, God can surprise you with something that you did not expect. God can bring a big miracle because to God there is no countdown. God can do his things at his only time. God can do his thing. If he smiles at you, he can just open a door for you like what he did to Mordecai when he was now sensing and smelling death. God intervened and the, you know, the plan was changed. Instantly the plan changed. When now Haman, his wife, his friends were now celebrating Looking at the gallows, they were celebrating, saying in, in just a few minutes, we will be seeing Mordecai here. In a few minutes, all the Jews, there will be blood all over. But God changed it. Instantly, God changed it. Suddenly, something happened. If God smiles at you, he will cause the heavens to come down. If God smiles at you, I want to say to, to us this morning, allow God to smile at you. Amen. Number 6. Verse 23. It, uh, verse 23 to verse 25. It says, Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you bless, you, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Verse number 25. May the Lord, I'm now reading NLT. May the Lord smile on you. 
and be gracious on you. God can smile at someone. And when he smiles, don't allow God to laugh at you. But allow God to smile at you. Allow God to smile at you. When a smile of God comes, it doesn't come empty, but it comes holding something. I am reminded of this year, the lady was giving a testimony that one day I was in the supermarket pushing a trolley full of groceries. When I was at the till point, one young guy at my back just punched my shoulder. Looking at him, I don't know him. Asking, who are you? Just saying, don't worry. But I'm just saying, don't worry about the payment. I am going to pay for you the grocery. She looks, she doesn't know. If I agree, what is my husband going to say that someone paid groceries for me? But it was a day that God smiled at him. The guy just swiped the card and went out. The lady, when she pushed the troll, she wanted to say, Dimaniko, who are you? Can I know you? Where do you stay? The guy just disappeared. Do you think he was, he was a human being? That was an angel sent from heaven. When God smiled at that family, God just released one angel to go and say, go and pay the groceries of that lady. I have checked my records. It's a day to day. Yes, to rejoice, it's a day to day. To enjoy the benefit of the kingdom. The benefit of the kingdom, God will pay for you. God will pay for you. God will pay, for you. God will pay the fees of your children. If you ever made a prayer, like a prayer that was made by another pastor, just to thank God after receiving a message from school that we want to congratulate you that you have already paid for the next three months. Uh -uh. This month I did not pay. Where is the next three months coming from? God has paid for you. God has paid for your children. To tell you that God can smile at you. God can smile at you. The, the miracles that we were crying for the whole year, <laughs> the whole year, it, the, that miracle can come in two months. It just needs you to understand and to remain fully in the kingdom and in this covenant we are in a very wonderful church that has got God a God who does things a God who does miracles the Lord God who does everything the covenant everything is in this book these books are carrying covenant they are carrying agreements and what we need to do only is to follow what the promise says. Glory to Jesus. Now, there is hidden power in my closing. There is hidden power of this covenant. But when the time comes, as I am saying, that favor, that power, it will locate you wherever you are. It doesn't matter where you are. It will locate you. We read the agreement, the vow that Jonathan and David made at one day. That it treat me well with the uh, uh, faithful love of God as long as I live. Even if I die. Did you get it? When he now he brought the family in the covenant. Yeah. Even when I die, treat my family the same. Treat my family the same. Mwara Kangan is not like a man who says, ah, sorry, I forgot. 
Ah, sorry, I had a lot of things, so I forgot. But to God, it's not like that. He's not a man that he should lie. Every promise, he makes sure that he fulfills. Now in 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter, 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 3 to 7 now, we see now that power is now working to the extended family. Jonathan is no more. Jonathan was killed in the battle the same day together with his father. So Jonathan is no longer there. But now that agreement, the power of the covenant, the power of the vow that they made that day is coming now into existence. King David remembered the covenant that he made with Jonathan. That he said, as long as I live, treat me even with my family. So, David says, is there anyone? Is there anyone left in the house of Saul? Listen, people of God, he is not saying in the house of David, in the house of Jonathan. He is saying in the house of Saul. Saul was David's enemy. <laughs> but here now David is now referring to his enemy. Is there anyone left in the house of Saul? Whom I can show kindness of God. That faithfulness of that day of agreement. David comes in now. He wants to fulfill the agreement, the promise. Because of this covenant, we see now grace, the favor, locating Mephibosheth, whom the Bible says he was now staying in a place called Lodiba. This place was not good. By the way, Mephibosheth was a prince because he was a son to Jonathan. In case Jonathan did not die. Only his father died. Jonathan was supposed to be on the throne. Yeah. Meaning Mephibosheth was a prince. Yeah. But a prince at this time around, he is nowhere to be found. He is hiding in a lowly place called Lodiba. Yeah. History tells us that Lodiba was a place that was barren. A place with no government. A place with no pasture. A town of forgotten people. In Lodiba, you would find an skilled and an educated outcast from society. It was a town full of disorder and confusion. There, the prince is staying. There, the prince is staying. In the middle of nowhere, favor comes through the covenant. In the middle of nowhere, the favor of God comes through the covenant. And David is saying, is there anyone who is left in the house of Saul that I can show kindness? We hear the Bible saying, his servant who was looking after him by the name Ziba, saying, my king, there is Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan. Now he is lame. He is staying in Lodiba. David quickly said, rush, go, fetch him. He is going to eat with me at my table the rest of his life. He is not a guest. He is not a visitor. 
just to come and eat one week, but he is now part of me because of the covenant I did with his father. He is now part of me. No matter now he was, he, he was, he, he was now a useless person staying in a lowly place. He is lame. He cannot walk, but he is part of me. Do you know that the covenant, it doesn't look your status. The covenant does not check where you are coming from. The power of the covenant does not check who you are. But when favor locates you, when favor locates you, when favor locates you, you become a somebody in a day. In a day, Mephibosheth becomes a prince again, became a prince again. My message this morning as I sit down, don't put on a scale the favor of God. And say, can it happen? I don't think so. Am I going to get it? But time has run out. Can I wait for 2025? Can this be my first prayer point of 10 days? The favor, the power of the kingdom cannot be put on a scale. As we see here that God can change situations in seconds. In seconds, God can change as I, as, as I shared with the ladies uh, 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 yesterday, I said, you know what? God sent a prophet, go and tell Hezekiah that you are not going to recover. You are going to die. Put your house in order. The prophet goes. He delivers the message. He turns out to go. Before he was at the gate, when he turned, Hezekiah is also turning on the wall. Before he gets to the gate, the, the prophet, God is, is saying, make a U-turn. Go and correct your statement. It doesn't take God a minute to hear a prayer of a righteous person. When a prayer comes from a righteous person, it takes God some seconds to change. To change things. To change situations. To change what we have been saying, this is now my problem. In seconds, God can change it. So I'm saying these two months, believe God for a miracle. In these two months, believe God for a miracle. There is favor coming on your way. God is locating you wherever you are. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. It doesn't matter your background. But allow God to smile at you. Allow God to open heavens. And smile at you. Allow God to remember you. The Bible says uh, that night, the king did not sleep the whole night. Sleepless night. God was saying, remember what Mordecai did. Remember that he saved your life. What did you do to him? Remember, then early morning, the king is now planning to reward someone. For many years, ah, God did not forget what you did for him. Can these two months be a time when God is remembering? <laughs> what did I do for this woman? At one time, he sacrificed for my work. What did I do for this guy? He sacrificed when the center was being bought. What did I do for this uh, widow? She did this, she ministered. Let this be the time that God will remember. That God will remember. Because records are there in heaven. Malachi 3.16. It says, those who fear God, they sat down. They spoke to each other. God listened and God heard. There are two things. To listen and to hear. But God made sure that two things he did. He listened and he heard. And a book of remembrance. Yeah. 
Ah, and a book of remembrance. And a book of remembrance was written. People of God, what do we do? What do we say? There is a book of remembrance that God pulls. <laughs> when the time comes, God pulls a book of remembrance just to say, what did I do? What did I do? <sighs> if you believe there is something that God is doing, it's not a problem of God to release, but it's a problem of the receiver. If I don't believe my blessing will continue hanging without someone to grab it. This morning, let it be a time of real connection as I remain in this agreement and the covenant of God. As I stand in the covenant, I'll be saying, Lord God, I thank you for everything. I thank you for what you have done for me. As I continue to stand in this agreement that you made with your servant. Here I am, Lord, I appreciate you. And in doing so, I'm reminding God. I'm making God to pull that book of remembrance. Let's open a door for God to smile at us. Let's open that door for God. Ah, yakataka ya makusukuna. Maria tata kunangwe ya bakatsukuma haya. Ureta kunende rebo koshika. Ale le 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 rebo koto. Let favor locate you. Let favor locate you. Maybe you are in your place. You have your Lord Diba that you know. You have a place that you were stuck. You are in a situation that you are stuck. That you are no longer known that you are there. But favor is coming. The favor of the kingdom is coming. The benefit of the covenant is coming. I am a Sakatarimona. Ah. To those who are believing God for a miracle. The things of God are just received by faith and by believing. You just come here. You raise your hands. No one is going to lay a hand on you. But you need to believe God. As I will call our overseer, he is the man who oversees the whole province and this church at large. He is a man who has been trusted by God to look after our souls. He is a man who has been entrusted by God to know our going in and our coming out. He is a man who has been trusted by God to have spiritual connection with us as he is going to declare a word upon us today. Believe God for your miracle to happen. Believe God that there is something that God is releasing for me. Don't say I was prayed by this man for the whole year. But there is an, an anointing of today that when he raises his voice to his God, God will pull records, books of remembrance. Let your name be found in that book. Kaya Bashaka.
As we lift our hands, I know I could have prayed, but um, I still sense in my heart to let the woman of God pray for you. I want you to expect a miracle. Expect a miracle. Expect a miracle. Expect a miracle to God. Barina Guayaba Cataya Alilela Bakuna Guayaba Casucuma Alela Takaya Bakutuna Barina Ninguena Rita Tarara Bacashika Alela Bakuna Guayaba Cassandra Father, as I extend my hand from this angle, let it not be an ordinary hand. Father, let it be your hand that is moving upon your people. Find their names in the book of remembrance. Find their names right now, Lord. It's your hand extended, O oh God, upon them. Locate them, Father, in the book of remembrance. Locate them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Locate them in their different avenues, Father. Kaya Bakataya. Locate them in their businesses. Locate them in their education. Locate them, Father, in their companies. Locate them, Father, in their families. Locate them in their marriages. Locate them, Father, in their families, O oh God, extended families. In the name of Jesus, let the hand of God locate you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, as I move, O oh God, to this angle, Lord Almighty, locate your people. Locate them, Father. Find them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Find them, O oh God, in the book of remembrance. Find them, O oh God. Shabaka ya makuna. Burete telelele boko sanda. Kiana mo na ningue na rike telelele boko sanda. Kaya bakata rimona. Blessed be your name. We know, Lord God, that you have done it, O God, for us. You have blessed us for these two months. We will come here with a testimony. We will come here with a real and tangible testimony that God has done it for me. God is not a man that he should lie. He doesn't change and or alter his promises. Kaya bakatara bakasanda. Kunena niyama ngwa ya bakata. Kurukuta riekete mona ngwe ya bashimenda. Lalela kurekete reboko na hunena. Rakumuna ande. Sukuma upepe na bakashika. Kurukuna ngwe ya bakata. Dia na kautete na ria kausukuma. Diketa mariekete reboko sanda. Kauna na niyama kautsukume. Marita kautete pepe ya banja ute. Ndakayakata. Akayakata, 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 kurukuta, kayakata, shakutete, kurutu, kurutu, kurute ndendia kata kuma, pepe teke anze, nata kayakata katokoto, mushukuma, ria katakataka, 
kuna angwa ya baka saka taka ya te njititi ya kanda munangwe ya baka saka ya ndeke ata diriku tetera diriku tetera diriku tetera diriku tetera diriku nana na utu kuma na unana na unana na unana ngwe kaya baka taka ya te kutete 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 shaka Taka 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 kuyabaka saka taka ya muru oh ah thank you father for blessing your people in Jesus name Let's worship God for a moment. Shakareba Sakaya. 
Thank you, Jesus. What a word. Let's celebrate Jesus. Thank you, You could be here today. Maybe you have not yet given your life to Jesus. Jesus is not yet the Lord over your life. Do we have such a person? Because we don't want you to go back without, without Jesus in your life. You want to receive Jesus in your life? You can lift up your hand. We'll pray with you. Do we have anyone like that in this place? Who says, I want Jesus in my life? Anyone? 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 We seem to be all children of God. That's all right. Um, in this very same atmosphere, we need to honor God and love our mother. Where, where 